In this video, I want to give an overview of journalism and journalists with a discussion specifically of digital journalism right in the middle there. So let's just start off with a very basic question and ask, what is journalism? Well, according to the American Press Institute, journalism is the activity of gathering, assessing, creating, and presenting news and information. It is also the product of these activities. So it involves a lot of different things here going on in journalism, not only the gathering and assessing of that material, but the creation and how it's presented and, and, and provided to the audience then. The role of journalism in our society is multifaceted and has been since the really the, the founding of our nation. First of all, journalism helps to maintain an informed citizenry, which is crucially important that, that the, you know, Average citizens, everyday people like you and me, that we understand what's going on in the world and 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 what's happening in the world around us. So it helps to maintain that informed citizenry. It also serves as a check on people and institutions of power. So journalism is the fourth estate, right? It's there to kind of pro to provide a check on the checks and balances, so to speak. It, it keeps us not only apprised of what's going on in the government and, and larger institutions like that, but but serves as sort of a, a check on those institutions, uh, not just government, but also private institutions and public institutions, um, providing information on you know, how they're being run, who they're being run by, and whether they're serving the function that they say they're serving. So these are all really important roles as well. And also journalism provides a voice to the voiceless. Right? It provides that voice to people who might not otherwise be heard. It presents us with information on things that uh, that people find important that might not, not otherwise uh, have a channel through which they can communicate their story. So journalism provides a voice to the voiceless. All three of those things are really crucially important functions in our society. Um, so journalism again, has always played an important role uh, since the even before the establishment of the United States. Journalism existed before that, obviously, in many different forms. But here in the United States, it, it's really taken off and, and become a really crucial part of those kind of checks and balances and, and providing a voice. There are different types of journalism that you could uh, discuss and that you could provide. There's investigative journalism. There's straight up news journalism. There's journalists that provide reviews or write columns and features. So there are a variety of different forms of journalism, each of which has its own kind of a, a different uh, niche, if you will. And uh, and so, um, so they all provide a different function and serve a different purpose. Uh, so um, it's important to understand that there's not just any one kind of journalism or any one kind of journalist. So we're going to shift gears, though, and talk specifically more about digital journalism, which is the focus of this video and this course, really. So journalistic content delivered via the Internet, social media, or other digital technology is what we define as digital journalism. So it's essentially journalism, but just just uh, issued and provided in a very specific kind of context or through a specific channel. Now, there are some advantages and disadvantages uh, and challenges that, that digital journalism faces. So a few of the key advantages to digital journalism over traditional journalism, first of all, is lower cost. Uh, it costs money to print newspapers. And, and I mean, just the, the, the cost of those physical, tangible features of a newspaper or a magazine or something like that uh, has, has a cost to it. you got to provide the paper. you got to provide the ink. you got to provide all the processing. And while there are costs to digital journalism as well, they tend to be lower. So uh, lower the cost and potentially raise the profit. Um, we'll talk about, you know, profit here in a minute. But so p digital journalism does offer that advantage of lower cost, usually. There's also a greater variety of distribution channels. When you're, when you're providing information digitally, you can provide it through the computer. You can provide it through your phone, for, through your tablet, through all these different forms of, of channels. So you're not just limited to you know, a newspaper or a magazine or whatever, you can you can provide it in a lot of different formats when you're talking about digital journalism. There are fewer barriers to entry. So, I mean, you could start at the top and just say, well, it costs a lot of money to own a newspaper or to start a newspaper or to fund a newspaper or something like that. So, or magazine or, or any you know, news type of organization. So, I mean, that's a huge barrier if you're going to try and do it that way. But even just to be in a position to write for a newspaper, like a traditional newspaper or magazine and things like that, there are a lot of barriers there too. You need the education, you need the skill, obviously. You need to get the job, you need to do all these things. So digital journalism doesn't have those barriers. Basically, anybody who has the ability to post something digitally can 
theoretically be a journalist. Uh, you know, and now we're going to talk about the difference between kind of content and journalism. Those are two different things. Um, but there are fewer barriers to entry. If you if you feel like you have a a voice and you want to get into journalism, you could do so immediately through your phone, through your computer, through whatever, just by starting a blog, by starting an online newspaper, starting whatever. Uh, so there are fewer barriers to entry when we talk about digital journalism. So those are some critical and key advantages uh, over traditional journalism. However, there are also some issues and some challenges that people face in digital journalism. I mean, first and foremost, and, and since the really the, the onset of the internet and and providing information through that way, organizations are still trying to figure out how to monetize journalism effectively in a digital world. You know, do you go with a subscription, or you just depend on advertising or you depend on affiliations and things like that. I mean, it's really kind of gotten complicated in terms of how, how do you monetize journalism in a digital world? So you know, we're still finding new avenues for that and still finding new functions for that, but that's an issue still and always has been for digital journalism. How do you monetize this thing? Again, I mentioned this before, but the difference between content and journalism is another current issue. In journalism, so uh, you know, the, if you've read an article online or been on a news site or been on really any website, you've come across something like in the image you see here, which which is more content than journalism, right? These are more stories. It's it's what somebody would call clickbait, for example, and they provide content. They may be providing information or whatever, but it's not strictly journalism in the traditional sense. They don't necessarily follow the same guidelines in terms of. Uh, in terms of accuracy and honesty and, and balance and those types of things. So um, so we're looking here at content as opposed to journalism. Now, that's a current issue as well because uh, people have trouble sometimes determining the difference between content and journalism, which is really, you know, giving journalism kind of a, a black mark in, in terms of, in some people's eyes, in terms of, you know, what what are they really providing here? So so you have to be able to, to differentiate between content and journalism, and that that's an issue in digital journalism, and, and having it being having it be taken seriously and all those types of things. There's also in digital journalism another issue of it's just a really crowded space. Again, we talked about fewer barriers to entry. Anybody can get into digital journalism, right? Because of that, it's a really crowded space. There's so much noise out there in, in a sense that it's hard for people to figure out which one to pay attention to. Okay, so that's another issue that there's just, it's, it's very crowded. There's, a, there's a lots of sources of information. And so being the voice that people hear can be a real challenge, getting people to find and, and look at your content and your, your journalistic content can be really a challenge. So those are some advantages and some, you know, current issues and challenges that digital journalism faces. Uh, all journalism really, though, is provided by journalists, right? So let's take a look at what it means to be a journalist, just very basically. Uh, just a like brief overview here. The roles of a journalist include reporting, right? The, the journalists are here to report information to us. They're here to, to provide information on breaking news and, and things that are happening in the world. They're also here to educate us. Could be could be a potential role for a journalist to educate us on how things work, you know, and some some issues that people report on here are really complicated, and so some of that involves educating the audience to, to help us understand how things like this work. You know, so some, some, sometimes they're an educator. Sometimes they investigate could be the role of a journalist. Right? To investigate, to get to the bottom of something, to find out what's at the core of something, why is something happening, not just what is happening, but why is that happening, and is it being hidden, and is it, you know, is it being covered up, or is it, you know, is there something more to the story that we need to find out? So sometimes journalists need to investigate, and a lot of times journalists will magnify something again, especially if you're getting a voice to the voiceless. You're magnifying this idea as a journalist. Your role may be to bring attention to something that isn't getting attention otherwise, and to, to help people realize this is an issue. This is a big deal. This is something you need to know about. This is something everybody should know about, so let me magnify this. So a journalist could uh, potentially be in a situation where they're, they're employing all of these roles, or maybe just some of them, um, but, but all of them could potentially be roles that a journalist is asked to fill and needs to fill. Journalists also have different responsibilities that they need to consider. If you're going to be a journalist, as opposed to just, again, as opposed to just a content provider, you know, if you're just providing content, you're providing, you know, clickbait about the Kardashians or whatever, that's a separate thing entirely. But if you're a legitimate journalist, a real journalist, 
follows these uh, responsibilities and understands that they have these responsibilities. First of all, you have legal responsibilities as a journalist that, that other people don't have. People just providing content don't have the same kinds of legal responsibilities that a journalist does. Those include confidentiality, for example, of sources. For example, so your, your sources, you need to, to maintain confidentiality with, with sources. When they say, I want to be off the record, or when they say, I don't want to be identified, uh, then when you attempt to you know, uphold that and, and regard that uh, with great seriousness as a legal responsibility. Uh, another is privacy. We, we, you know, there are different privacy issues that come, around, come along, uh, and, and legitimate journalists will respect the legal barriers of that privacy. And then libel and defamation. We need to be careful, you know, in terms of what we're saying about people, what we're writing about people. Of course, libel and slander, kind of the same thing, but one is written and one is spoken. But uh, but we need to be careful in terms of defamation that you could be held responsible if what you say damages someone unnecessarily or uh, you know, without any factual basis, then you could be held responsible for defamation. So uh, we have those types of legal responsibilities. And journalists also have these ethical responsibilities. In addition to the legal ones, we have these ethical responsibilities of, first of all, accuracy, to, to report things accurately, to not try and skew the information and not try and, you know, fudge things, but to report things accurately as they happen and as we understand that they stand. We also have an obligation toward balance, to, to as much as possible, remove our own personal biases and the biases of our, or the organization that we represent and, and provide a story with balance. Okay, now it's, it's not going to be possible for you to remove every hint of bias. That's just not humanly possible. But we need to do the best we can to report things in a balanced way and to provide information in a balanced way. And then finally, honesty. Journalists have an obligation to be honest and be, to be truthful. Again, really connected to this uh, idea of accuracy and honesty, but these are just these ethical obligations and responsibilities that we have as journalists. Okay. If you have questions about this or any other uh, questions related to, to g digital journalism, as we, as we get moving here, feel free to email me. I'm always happy to respond to questions via email, and I'll respond to you as, as quickly as I possibly can. Okay. In the meantime, uh, Happy digging.